Okay, good morning everybody. Today's date I believe is September 5th or 6th, 2017. It's Tuesday. My name is Leslie Williams. I live in San Diego, California in La Jolla. I am a target victim and activist concerning the continued criminal expeditions of what is known as gang stalking. Today I'm going to the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, which is located off of Genesee Avenue and Governor Road in, in University City. University City is one block just a few blocks directly adjacent to La Jolla. Now, anybody that is watching this video, because as soon as I get in there and bring up my blog, I'm going to paste this video inside of my blog and update it. If anybody's uh, following my blog on a regular basis and, and, and see it, and if they're in the neighborhood, they can come in there and, well, have I ever caught the words gang stalk, oh my god, suck my D-I-C-K, suck on the D-I-C-K, gang stalking, stalk, stalker, stalk, oh my god, laughing, gang stalk, oh my god, suck D-I-C-K, being said in that way, I might take a photo. Now, anybody can go in there and read a book, buy some coffee, wear a tape recorder or use their phone and try and catch it. Now, I'm also getting stalked in that Bonds, which is directly across the plaza from that coffee shop. And am I getting stalked in the Carl's Jr., which is literally two blocks away, okay, right next to the library. Now, my fellow American citizens, if you don't know anything about gang stalking, all you have to do is extensively Google it and to give you an in-your-face immediate example concerning how gang stalking is being exposed by tens of thousands of Americans all over the internet. This crime has been covered on national local, uh, I'm sorry, national radio shows, including ones I've been on, local news broadcast, and alternative media. Let me just take this last cup of the cigarette real fast. Okay, it's been covered here in San Diego even, back in November and December 2016. You can go to Google or YouTube and type in San Diego mother thinks she's a victim of community stalking. Now, you can also go to my blog, which is attached to my Twitter account. There is a tweet link pasted in the title of this Periscope video. Copy down the URL characters, write them, type them in at your URL address bar, bring that up, and scrutinize every single thing that is in there meticulously and slowly, and you will witness truth. Now, my fellow American citizens, as I was leading to a minute ago, by saying that you can, to, in order to immediately show you that this crime is occurring, I'm going to say two things. First, you can go to YouTube and type in also gang stalking bullying on steroids. Okay? It's a news broadcast. You can also write down on a piece of paper the name of any 10 well known businesses in the United States or even 20. Okay? And then go to Google and type in the name of those businesses and then press the space on your space bar and then type in gang stalking and extensively review what comes up at Google. And you can even probably YouTube that as well. Then go back to Google and type in the name of any five well-known universities in California to gang stalking and look at what comes up, especially the UC California system and SDSU. Now, pay close attention to my statements. Now, if you and then if you really want to get meticulous, you can then type in the name of all these businesses, okay, to gang stalking to five different states and look at what comes up. See, my fellow American citizens, what this is is organized crime in a system. It's a nationwide syndicate up and operating in every government in the United States, okay? Working on a template of methods, tactics, protocols, maneuvers in order to achieve criminal schemes, criminal motivations. So the target ends up exploited, their finances end up exploited, their property, their insurance, and much more. You would not believe what I know. Now, they made me homeless in Michigan. I got videos in my blog flat out showing that I was complaining and reporting again to the University of Michigan, Dearborn, Michigan, Campus Safety on January 20, 2011. You clearly see me reporting it in the videos in my blog. Understand, though, when you get to my blog and you look at those videos pertaining to U of M, what is in the description of those YouTube videos I did not put in there. They were put in there in San Diego. Because I kept those video cards of those events. In Michigan, I did not, at that time, I did not, not know how to upload videos to YouTube. Okay, at all. Or there would have been many videos on YouTube put there. Okay. So what I did was I waited until I came to San Diego and I learned how to upload videos to YouTube. And then I, I, I put them in there. So I know that it had to be somebody from Mich uh, either San Diego or somebody from Michigan noticed it. And then went in and literally put what they put in 
in the description of my YouTube videos. Now, when you go into my blog as well, you will clearly be able to witness that one of the many shows that I have been on concerning being on the Ground Zero show with Clyde Lewis, one of the shows, all uh, the majority of the shows that I've been on on his show, the majority of those links are in my blog. The 901-2015 link clearly shows me stating on a national wide radio show, nationwide radio show, clearly exposing to millions of Americans that my blogs and YouTube videos and so on and so forth have been hacked from the very beginning, which they have, including email email accounts as well. Now, so uh, 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 you can go to my blog, which is attached to the profile of my Twitter account, once you bring that tweet link up that's in the title of this Periscope video. Cyber surveillance being a method of gang stalking, they can deduce what you're doing at all times, they can figure out what email accounts you have, what YouTube accounts you have, what the blog that I'm currently utilizing is hacked. Okay, so uh, I've run it late this morning, so this isn't going to be a very long video. Uh, if I am, if, if anybody does anything to my bike, okay, any function on my bike, because it's a brand new bike, it's about two and a half months old, they literally just broke the brakes on them uh, uh, at Vaughn's Grocery Store off of Regents Road in Arabia Street, which is in La Jolla. Now, you can also go to Google and type in Vaughn's and Gangstalk and research it meticulously. And don't think for one minute that any corporation or government cannot afford to have information that is detrimental about them scrubbed off the internet. I've seen the advertisements on uh, Kogo, which is a San Diego uh, local news uh, radio show. I've seen the commercials on their radio show, okay, about how uh, there's companies out there that literally part of their business, that, that their whole business is designed to scrub, take off negative information about about any corporation, university, whatever, or even a, a, a person. So don't think that any corporation will not spend money to take dis, uh, uh, to take information off the internet that is negative about them because they will. Okay. Now, uh, my fellow American citizens, so I strongly suggest you extensively research bonds and gang stalking. And when you do, and you see the testimony of the victims that come up, Remember, the, the key to see how they're being gang stalked is by taking their descriptions concerning what they say they're experiencing and then type those descriptions into gang stalking at Google. And that way you can see that what they're stating, even though some of it might sound bizarre, okay, because some of the methods that are used in this crime are bizarre, the way for you to be able to see what's actually going on, like Bonnie and Oceanside, Oceanside, California, here in San Diego, here in uh, California, I believe it's in San Diego County, okay. She's uh, all over the internet exposing how these maggots are being propped up at entrances and exits, how she is, uh, how she's being subject to vehicle harassment and color harassment. Now, what she's exposing has been exposed by XCI scientist Robert Duncan in his interviews and by tens of thousands of other Americans all over the internet. So whenever you research any, whenever you bring up any information concerning what gang stalking victims are stating they're experiencing, if you don't understand it, especially if you've never heard of this crime before, the best thing to do is to take their statements, the descriptions of what they state they're experiencing, and type them into Google and then cross-reference it to gang stalking. And you'll be able to see what they're describing are gang stalking techniques. Okay, and then research, obviously, sensitization methods in gang stalking. Now, one of the main methods of gang stalking is the, the way the business community is using these crimes, but not limited to, is by and through what is known as a law enforcement tool, which is called a community notification that is being used by organized crime syndicated police officers and other individuals in the government that have access to these law enforcement tools, okay, which can encompass even social services workers, absolutely, probation officers, parole officers. Now, these community notifications were supposedly designed in order to put individuals that have already got a record for, like, say, uh, very violent behavior or other issues where the community, where it might be best, uh, best to notify the community about these types of individuals because of the, their past factual behavior. But what they're doing, an organized crime syndicate is doing, is using this type of no notification, one of many that they're using, to put completely, 100% completely average American citizens on them that are being targeted with this crime. They can then combine it with a lie, a fake bogus criminal investigation file, okay, and slander, and a badge, 
and that's how they're able to then get the community to do things for them based on this these just aforementioned descriptions you can also go to youtube and type and listen to a stranger okay now all my descriptions that i just stated can be googled to gang stalking and you'll see it's the truth because it's all over the internet being exposed by thousands of victims absolutely now my fellow american citizens so you can also research how the Chamber of Commerce is being also identified uh, persons uh, who are managing aspects of this gang stalking criminal expedition. Because the Chamber of Commerce, like if you went to Google and typed in the San Diego St. Chamber of Commerce, look at how many business partnerships that they have in San Diego. The last time I looked, I think it was over 20,000. Then there's another uh, entity here in San Diego called Sandbad, which is what it seems to be is a conglomeration of city governments within California or within San Diego County. Okay, And so when you look at all the different types of networked relationships that law enforcement has, okay, that, uh, that, um, that the business community has, and then when you look at how that can then be used in conjunction with the community notification, it's very easy for these assholes to then apply their templates of methods in order to use the business community, but make no mistake about it, corporations are also involved in managing and hosting and perpetrating gang stalking because of the money they're making off the victims. Now, every single place that plays a role in gang stalking against any victim, whether it be me or anybody else, their their goal is to perpetrate the crime and protect it. And one of the ways they protect it is by and through staging events, which are which can also encompass complaints, accusations, threats, any type of staged altercation, and then even stage the witnesses to that event. Because you got to remember, it's a staged event. So they want to try and play it out to where they try to make it appear that the, the target is responsible for the event, including provoking the target to act out mentally, verbally, even physically. Okay. So what they'll do, what, the, what gang stalking will usually do at universities, libraries, and businesses is what they'll do is first create the mental association pertaining to creating this mental association in the target's mind to them in reference to them letting the target know that they're involved in the harassment of them. After, then is then, after this is then created and cultivated and reinforced in the target's mind through the repetition of the harassment every time the target goes in, the target is obviously made aware that they're involved in it. Then what they'll do is once they, they obviously know that the target is becoming mentally aware of it because they're literally observing the target's internet activity pertaining to who the target's exposing. They're observing the target's physical okay, uh, uh, postures and, and uh, the way they're responding to it facially while they're experiencing it. So trust me, there's a million different ways these assholes can ascertain that the, uh, that uh, and become aware that the target knows that they're actually being gang stalked. Okay in this environment. So the goal first is to form the mental association to the non-stop harassment the target endures, usually through sensitization methods. Google that extensively. Okay, sensitization methods can encompass but not limited to physical gestures, repeated words and phrases, repeating identical words and phrases, repeating sounds, color harassment, you name it. Okay, so after they know that the association has been formed in the target's mind, that they are involved in the gang stalking harassment of the target, they will then try to provoke the target to act out, over the even over the most simplest thing, even over the most simplest complaint. This is done so the target will think, well, you got a lot of nerve complaining, approaching me and complaining to me about this or that, when I have, when, in reference to the target's thinking, when I have been subject to two such bad harassment in here. And then they take that and try and escalate it by saying, well, we don't know what you're talking about. Tell us. Okay. And that way, if the event uh, escalates or then another one uh, transpires at a later date when the target's in there, and then the cops are called, the employees and the management, okay, and even the perpetrators they use for the event can all say, well, she thinks she's being gang stalked. She must be crazy. Do you see how it works? And then they ban the target. Now, this is done for many reasons. To ban the target so they won't have Wi-Fi resources that the target's using to expose them. This is done so that the target cannot frequent the place in order to get their needs met, like if it happens at a grocery store, like Bonds. Absolutely, absolutely. Make no mistake about it. Okay. And it's also done, okay, to make the target feel mentally raped about the whole situation. But it's also done to produce falsified documentation about the target in case the target ever sues them. 
That way, when the court proceedings occur, they can say, well, we don't know what's going on with, like, let's just say if it was me. They can just say, well, we don't know what's going on with Miss Williams. She thinks she thinks she's being gang in here. We don't even know what gang stalking is. Our, our goal is to run a, a safe and, and, and uh, happy, happy atmosphere when it's nothing but absolute, total, complete lies. Absolutely, totally. I mean, it's, it's it bold face in your face lies, and these people had no, no, no problem at all with committing perjury on the stand, okay, including using the individuals they use for the staged event, okay? Absolutely. This shit is covered in courts, prosecutors, public defenders, members of the DA's office, and police are directly connected to it, and this is the gang of gang stalking, where they work together, okay, in a covert partnershiping relationship in order to use the system to perpetrate the crime, use the system to protect the crime, while then turning around and also using the system to completely vilify and nullify the target of the crime. Absolutely. It's all over the internet being exposed by tens of thousands of people. Today I'm going to Carl's Jr., Bond's Grocery Store, <clears throat> and the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf. Okay? Now, the Bond's and the Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf are located in the same plaza. Let's see if they fuck with my bike in any way, shape, or form, any function of it, and or bike block, and or bike theft. That also includes, let's see if they damage any of my computers, or any of my chargers, or anything else. Let's see if any incident happens in anywhere in any of these businesses, and that absolutely includes on my way to bathrooms, in the bathrooms, and coming out. Because the bathroom area is usually in bonds, okay, is a more isolated spot within the store, meaning that they can pretty much pull anything outside of the bathroom or in it or when I come out of it and there'll be less witnesses and the only witnesses that will be there will be the staged ones who act like customers. Okay, I know exactly what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Now, staged events and gang stalking crimes are called street theaters. That's a term that can be Googled and even YouTube. Okay, so when you look at the evidence that is in the tweet that is attached in the title of this Periscope video, you will see truth and know this as well. That tweet is part of a tweet chain, meaning that there are tweets that are attached to it at the top, hundreds of them. So scrutinize all the indisputable, in-your-face, black-and-white evidence that is in that tweet chain as well. It's completely indisputable. My name is Leslie Williams. I'm in San Diego, California. Now, when it comes to the UPS video that's incorporated, its YouTube link incorporated within the tweet, that is incorporated in the title of this Periscope video. What you want to do is listen very hard by put, pressing your earphones to your ears in a room that's completely quiet. And what you want to listen for is what I state's being said, okay, in the song right after I say verbally, let's see if you hear gang stalk, suck my D-I-C-K, and oh my God. Okay, I think it said, uh, you're going to hear what you're going to hear in the song at about, start listening cl very closely at between 1 minute and 15 seconds into it to 1 minute and 35, 40 seconds into it. How it's repeated over and over and over again. you got to listen very, 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 very carefully. Now, also know that in gang stalking expeditions, they will use all falsified police reports, incident sheets, and, uh, in, and incident reports that are made about a target after the police are called after a staged event occurs. And this also includes along all walking routes and bus routes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Google public transportation and gang stalking. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, I literally got to go because I'm running late. Now, uh, if, if, if MTS personnel and or customers try to complain about me or accuse me of anything at any bus stop and or on any bus route on any date, especially in the next 30 days, including today, it will be gang stalking. Okay, but they like to stage events towards you. When, when there's no witnesses, like if you're walking down the street heading towards a bus stop, okay, when you're getting off the bus and walking to a business, okay, that way they can like stage an altercation with a homeless person or a social deviant. That way no business can be sued, MTS can't be sued, okay, and there's, a, and there's more than likely no witnesses because nowadays people aren't going to pull over their cars and stop anything, okay, do you understand? Gang stalking does not like any witnesses. And, and let me give you, a, uh, just to show you an example about that. One day I was sitting over at UTC smoking a cigarette. I was sitting on this little utility box, and I seen this guy coming from across the street. And I, Once you become an extremely seasoned, educated, targeted individual, you can almost spot the individuals that they're going to utilize towards you, at least if they, even if it's just to overtly engage in a sensitization method around you, okay? 
So I seen this guy, and he was he was standing across the street. Okay, and he was waiting across the street. And then we crossed the street and got on my side. I was six feet off the intersection. The cars that would pull up to the light that's right there at the intersection were sitting at the red light. So what he did was he stood at the corner until the, the light turned green and all the cars took off. And then he approached me and started harassing me. So they don't like witnesses because everybody was sitting there right in their car at the light. You understand? So that's going to be probably that and wooded areas are going to be their choice of method that they're going to start really escalating their crimes towards me here in San Diego. If they keep using businesses, it's going to – because people in La Jolla know what's happening to me. Trust me, they do. <laughs> Flat out. Now, I don't do drugs. I don't drink. I do not hang around anybody at all in any way, shape, or form and have not, not even once since I arrived in San Diego on August 8, 2011. <clears throat> Excuse me, up and through this date because I know that these filthy maggots will attempt to infiltrate your life intimately, socially, and so on. That can be good as well. Intimate infiltration and social infiltration is all over the internet to be directly connected to gang stalking. And that's done so they can lead you to places they want you to end up, especially after they made you homeless. So I strongly suggest you go to Google and type in human trafficking and gang stalking. Okay. Now, and then go to Google and type in the police and gang stalking. So do you honestly think that their sick, criminally insane animal asses are ever going to admit that any target individual... Is, is, is factually a gang stalking victim when they know they've been involved in gang stalking. It's directly connected to human trafficking. One of hundreds of criminal motivations that these organized crime syndicates are absolutely directly connected to, involved in, and perpetrate and protect. Absolutely. Not one San Diego police officer. I've already caught them filing two falsified police reports, and God only knows how many other ones that they have, have falsified that I don't even know about. Okay. So, fellow American citizens, when I state you can go into any of these businesses on any date that I state that I'm in there in my blog or if I make a Periscope video that morning before even getting there, and these words and phrases are said around anybody in there, especially when I'm in there or, or maybe standing outside for a second to have a cigarette break, okay, or like after I go into the bathroom, just hear me out. So, anybody can go in there with any type of recording device. Okay, and record this shit. Now, in closing, because I got to go, about three weeks ago in my blog, I stated that I was going to start stating in my blog where I was at in real time. Because once you update your blog, okay, even if you're still in it, updating it after you've updated it, the updated version will appear at Google. So if anybody's following me in real time on Google concerning my blog, and I say, okay, I'm in the coffee bean and tea leaf right now. It's, and then I say today's date and the time, and I, and I say, come on in and see if you can catch any verbal harassment happening around me, okay? And then once I press the update button, that blog that still is featured through Google, once anybody clicks on it, they can see in real time where I'm at. Get in their car and go in there. Once I started doing this about three weeks ago, the harassment dropped from 100% on a massive scale down to 20%. But guess what started? The accusations and the complaints, including at Bonds on Arabia Street and Regents Road. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those son of a bitches ain't nothing but lying criminals. Absolutely. And I'm referring to management employees. I'm not afraid of these people. They, they think I should be afraid because they know that banning a target, okay, is going to affect the target in reference to where's the target going to get their needs met at, groceries and whatever, okay. So they feel that they got this power over a target that if the target complains about it, all they got to do is deny that they know about it, deny that they're involved in it, okay, and try and bait you to act out, okay, and then they can then try and use that as a reason to ban you. Or they'll try and come up with some bullshit excuse that people are complaining about you, but yet you never get to see any of these people that are complaining about you. They can make up anything and say it. See, because what the cops do when a staged event happens at a business, you know what the cops do when they come? This is literally what they say. They say, well, this business has a right to ban anybody they want from their establishment. We have no power over it, so you're just going to have to accept it and move on. That's literally what they say. They will not investigate at all, period, while they're in your physical presence and you're complaining to them about them being involved in gang stalking. They will completely ignore you, okay, totally ignore everything you're saying and say, look, 
I don't know what you're talking about concerning this game stock, and we don't know nothing about it, okay? But they say they don't want you in your store. There's nothing they can do about that, so you just better move on. And that's exactly what they say. The gang of gang stalking. Where they work together and they just say these bullshit statements. And so you end up living in the effects and the results. Having to go way out of your way now to another place, even in another community, just to get your daily needs met, your groceries. And this is how this shit works. It's done to wear you down. Okay, it's also done to steer you to other neighborhoods that are worse than the ones that you were grocery shopping in. That way, the cops can say when they stage an event, well, what do you what do you expect, Leslie? This is a bad neighborhood. You understand? This is literally the techniques of gang stalking. I just deconstructed to you and I'm exposing to you so you can see the, tra uh, the factual realities concerning these continued criminal expeditions. I literally got to go. Thank you for listening, and this video does apply for the next 30 days. And then it includes arrest for legal lodging, trespassing, or encroachment. I got to go, everybody, okay? So have a blessed day, and say a prayer for me, all right? Thank you.